thanks for taking the time to uh, join us today. My name is Matt Richards and uh, I'm uh, the Senior BI Consultant here at ICASEC Services. So um, who are ICASEC Services um, and what do we do? So at ICASEC, our aim is to empower leaders to make better decisions uh, you know, utilising Microsoft 365. We deliver this by providing the best technology to business using Microsoft ecosystem and delivering value at pace. Um, we're a Microsoft implementation partner and we are also a key support partner for information communication using Microsoft SharePoint, portfolio management using Microsoft Project and data visualization um, and the reason that we're all here today using Microsoft Power BI. We're also experts in the deployment of OneDrive, Microsoft Teams, uh, Exchange Online, Dynamics, Power Automate and Power Apps. And because of our extensive knowledge, and our experience and the skills that we have in house, we've been accredited as a Microsoft Gold Partner. And that just goes to further solidify our commitment to the Microsoft offering. So why are we actually here today? Um, and what are we going to be, you know, what are we going to be doing? So today we're going to be Going over, um, for those of you that are new to Power BI, um, I'll be taking you through um, an overview of what Power BI, Power BI is and how it can be used to enable organizations to discover valuable insights. I'll take you through the process of obtaining and installing Power BI desktop on your computer, and then we'll get to the good bits. We'll connect to your data, um, and this is where you know Power BI will really start to come alive. Now, once the data has been connected and we've transformed that data, it's then time to start making and creating your first report. So, as I said, what is Power BI? Power BI is um, an interactive reporting platform. Um, so those things like data analytics and business analytics and all of those buzzwords that you've heard, that's what Power BI is all about. Um, it enables you to get to the right answers very quickly. In fact, Power BI's tagline when it first came out was five minutes to wow, and it's still true today. But the actual history of Power BI and you know where it came from, um, it goes way back with Microsoft. So Microsoft have actually been involved with business intelligence and uh, analytics for a very long time. They had reporting services, they had analysis services, and what they did, they brought all of that together to form the roots of Power BI itself. Microsoft Power BI um, is a cloud platform, and that's what we're going to be looking at today for this session. Um, there are some on-prem options, but what we'll be doing is talking about the cloud platform itself. So Power BI consists of a Microsoft Windows desktop application called Power BI Desktop and an online software as a service um, element called the Power BI service. It also has mobile Power BI apps and they're available on phones and tablets. So these three elements, the desktop service, the mobile apps, they're designed to let people create, share and consume business insights in a way that serves them or their role most effectively. So the major building blocks of Power BI are data sets, reports and dashboards. Now they're all organized into workspaces and they're created on capacities. Now capacities are a core Power BI concept representing a set of resources to host and deliver your Power BI content. Um, workspaces are containers for dashboards, reports and data sets that we'll be looking at today. And they also hold the data flows um, that work as part of uh, Power BI. Now there are two types of workspaces. You have my workspace, and workspaces. So this is where it gets a little bit uh, complicated. So my workspace is the personal workspace for any Power BI customer to work with your own content. Only you have access to your workspace and you can share, share dashboards and reports from your my workspace. If you want to collaborate on dashboards and reports or create an app, then you want to use uh, this area. Now workspaces are used to collaborate and share content with colleagues. So you can add colleagues to your workspace, but not to your my workspace. And you can collaborate then on those dashboards and data sets, but with one you know, underlying exception, 
all of your workspace members need to have Power BI Pro licenses. Um, the other element or the third element of the Power BI makeup and structure is um, a data set. Now a data set is the collection of data that you import or connect to. So Power BI lets you connect to and import all sorts of data sets and bring all of it together in one place. So a Power BI report is one or more visuals made up of these data sets. So line charts, maps, tree maps, and they're all called you know, visuals. And you can create reports from scratch within Power BI or import them into dashboards that colleagues have made or shared with you. Um, you can connect uh, data sets from Excel, Power BI desktop or other database examples. Um, but what we're going to be looking at today will be connecting um, a basic Excel workbook um, that contains some information about uh, Olympic athletes and we'll start to make our own um, first uh, dashboard. So Power BI imports a pre-built report if you connect to a, um, a tool which is a software as a service application. Um, this is done automatically and not something that would have to be created um, separately. Now, the last element, I suppose, the last element that we would kind of look at with Power BI would be the dashboards themselves. So dashboards are different to reports. So a dashboard is something that um, you create in the Power BI service um, or something a colleague creates in the Power BI service and they share it with you. So it's a single canvas that contains zero or more tiles um, or widgets. Each of those tiles or widgets is pinned from different reports. So entire report pages can also be pinned to a dashboard as a single tile. Now, you might be thinking, well, what kind of data can it actually handle? Um, so Power BI can handle um, just about anything. So it can handle things from your simple Excel file all the way to massive data amounts. If you've got data of any size, Power BI is an option for you. So the journey of Power BI, you're going to come at it from two different ways. Either one, you're actually creating those reports or shaping the data and working with the data, um, writing the reports themselves, or you're just coming at it as a consumer of the reports and making those reports um, uh, to make actual business decisions with that data. So what we'll do, we'll look at the writing piece first. And from a writing perspective, your journey is probably going to start with the Power BI desktop which um, what I'll do, I've got it installed, so I might as well take you through that um, now. So um, the Power BI desktop, um, it's a free download from powerbi.com or the Microsoft Store. And to, be to begin that journey, um, you're going to need to get some data. Now, Power BI can connect to a, a bunch of different data sources, whether that's Excel, SQL, or you know, standard relational databases cloud sources or services that you know you use like Salesforce or QuickBooks or maybe it's just an API that you want to get data or even a web page that you can scrape. There's a ton of options <clears throat> and when you don't even know if it's even available or maybe you don't see it in the list you need to check out the ODBC or OLE database providers because those are always options um, that you can go and connect to um, to get to your data. So after you've got your data, you're going to want to clean or transform it using Power Query. Now, Power Query is the area where you would go to massage your data. You get it in the right format if it's not already done for you at source. So this is where you do that transformation piece, you know, and there are a whole host of different actions inside of Power Query to really get your data in the right format as you pull it into Power BI. This will help you make sure that you can get the most out of it once you get the data into Power BI uh, ready for your reporting. <clears throat> so now the data is there, um, you're going to want to do some additional modeling steps. So just to tidy things up and make sure everything is actually right and where you want it to be. Whether that's hiding fields from the report view um, because they're just not needed for the actual reporting um, or creating measures in DAX. These actions are going to really bring your data up a level and really make that data shine inside of Power BI. The modeling step, as we'll see later on, is very important. Typically, a lot of conversations that I have with Vicotech customers are about making that data work, especially at scale. If you're working with a small amount of data, 
maybe a tiny amount, um, you know, the transformation step may not matter to you. But uh, if you're looking at large scale, the modeling step shouldn't be overlooked and you should absolutely spend a lot of time there. Um, so what we'll see is that once we've got that data shaped and modeled correctly, correctly. we we'll want to build and it's as easy as dragging and dropping or learning the clicks and being able to pick the right visualization for your data. Um, we'll bring that data in and then we'll lay it out while keeping in mind things like accessibility and the story that you want to tell with your data. There's a wide range of visuals to pick from and also there are AI visuals as well um, to take your data up a notch. So beyond your normal visualization visuals like the key influences and the decomposition tree and other things of that nature. So I definitely recommend checking those out. Once everything is done, um, you will then publish it up to the Power BI service. Now that's up in the cloud. So the people that you want to be able to see that report, they'll be able to consume it. They'll be able to share it and do all those great things. Now, there is a licensing that comes in here, whether that's Power BI Pro, um, the premium per user or premium capacity. There are a lot of different options. Now, we could do a whole session just on licensing with Microsoft, but we're not going to get into that in this session, though. Um, we plan on hosting some other sessions to talk about this, but just know that you will need to be mindful about that, especially when you want to share with other members of your organization, as there are some implications there that need to be accounted for. So, you can take advantage of integration with other Microsoft uh, tools like Microsoft Teams. There's actually a personal app that's available there as well as just adding a tab in your channel and also just a quick link embedding. So inside of chats themselves, you can quite literally drop the URL of a report into your Teams chat and the report will appear within there. You also have a few embed options as well inside of reports and dashboards, whether that's a secure embed publish it to the web or actual full on Power BI embedding. Now, Power BI embedding um, means that you have the Power BI service running inside of your um, organizational website, so it can be accessed then from um, uh, outside of your uh, tenant. You can do a lot of reports um, with, sorry, do a lot with those reports just to get them where they need to be, or you can just share a report inside of Power BI. Now, you can do that with internal users in your organization or external parties. So maybe they've got like an outlook.com address or a Gmail address. You can share reports with them as well. Again, with all of these options, just be mindful of the licensing that may be required. Um, right, so that's coming at it from the authoring perspective, but what if you're just consuming reports and you just wanna get the most out of Power BI? Now, just be aware that there's concepts of like the workspace um, versus an app. Um, and those are different ways that you can consume your reports and dashboards. And those are also different ways that you can share as well. So maybe you're a consumer and you want to share this with another colleague. Now, that's where you would go to do that. Inside of those workspaces and apps, you're also going to be able to work with those reports and dashboards and interact with the reports explore your data a little bit more and create bookmarks and consume the report for yourself. And then also there's the mobile app. So um, even on the go, you can connect to your reports and your data and explore them on your devices, um, whether it's your phone, um, your tablet or whatever you um, have. <clears throat> the other benefit of uh, Power BI is the speed of the cloud. So Power BI has been known for fast updates, you know, and regular updates. Power BI gets updated uh, once a month and the actual service gets updated weekly. There's always new stuff coming out and you can check out the Power BI blog um, for more information and for all of those, those kind of great announcements and releases that are done. So in summary, Power BI um, is, it's a collection of software, services and apps and connectors that work together to turn your unrelated sources of data into coherent, visually immersive and interactive insights. Um, those insights can then be used to make, you know, informed decisions within your organization. So when you leverage the power of Power BI and other Microsoft technologies, that you can lead to significant returns in terms of not only revenue, but your business users ability to make beneficial decisions. 
Power BI is built on Azure. That's Microsoft's cloud computing infrastructure and platform. So this ensures that your data is secure and only accessible by authenticated users. So that is a lot of information. Um, but where uh, do we go next? Um, I think what we need to do is work out how, we, you know, how you get from not having Power BI, getting on your machine and getting that data connected. So before you get started with uh, making your reports and dashboards, there's a few things you need to do. So first things first, and obviously the most obvious is getting Power BI. And we do this by downloading and installing it. Now, there are two main ways that we can do this, but both um, end up with the same result. Um, you go to powerbi.microsoft.com, and that will bring you to this web page here. Um, this is the Power BI download um, page. Here you can see the download free button. When you click on this, it will open up the Microsoft Store and take you to the Power BI download page. Now, if, you have, if you've already got Power BI, obviously it will show you that your project is here, it's already installed, and you just launch it. Once you've, if you haven't got it, it will say get, and you click here and it will install. So once, again, downloading Power BI Desktop is entirely free. You don't need an enterprise account. You don't need a commercial account. Anyone can download Power BI Desktop. The benefit of installing through the Microsoft Store is that anytime Power BI gets updated, your install will receive those updates automatically. And anytime any of the components change, the Microsoft Store will only download the pieces that change, so the updates are very quick and they're easy. Lastly, a nice added benefit is that you don't have to be the admin logged into your machine in order for you to install it. Um, any user can install, can go ahead and install Power BI Desktop. And once you've finished installing Power BI Desktop, um, what we need to do is go ahead and launch it. So you could um, go to your start menu and type in Power BI. Um, there's no need <laughs> in this case, um, or you can pin it for um, quick access. So that's exactly what I've done with my start menu here. I've got my other options. So these are all the Microsoft tools that I currently use at the moment in the Power Platform, plus the others. You can see here you've got Power BI. So when we open it up, you will see this welcome screen up here. Now, I want to take a moment to uh, walk you through it. Like hopefully it will have, hopefully it appears. It seems to be taking a little bit longer to update or open as I would like. Aha, here we go. So here's the welcome screen. So I want to take a little bit um, of time to work, walk through it. So up here in the left hand corner is the most important thing you can do to get started, and that is get um, get data. You can't create visualizations unless you have some data. You'll also see recent sources that you've used here. So these are any data sources that you've used in the past. So they're here for quick access. And at the bottom, if you've ever used Power BI before, you'll also get be able to get back to reports that you've created. Now, over on the right-hand side of Power BI, provides a whole bunch of training. So you've got um, uh, like the what's new, the forums, you've got these. So building reports, query view concepts, uploading reports. Now, I highly recommend looking at this material because there are some great videos here and also tutorials that you can run through. So now you've got Power BI, you want to know how to connect your data. So if you're new to Power BI, and you're not really sure what to do, as I've said, the first thing you're going to have to do is get some data. We can't do anything from a report perspective. We can't create those great visualizations that you've seen without getting into Power BI, sorry, without getting data into Power BI for us to do something with. So how do we do that? Now, there are a couple of different ways that we can go about doing this. And there are some terms that are used within the product that you may not be familiar with. So I'm going to break it all down for you. Um, this is how we go about it. So this is the first part. So what I'll do, I'll take you through um, the ribbon bar, I think, to begin with. So on the main ribbon bar, if I close this area here, on the main ribbon bar, there is a get data button. And when you click that, you're presented with a list of common data sources. So as I click this now, it will open up. And here we have our common data sources. So Power BI itself supports a ton of data sources. There are a lot, and there are even more added 
all the time. Um, so this is why you want to make sure that you have the latest Power BI desktop version. The first way to get data into Power BI is to import that data. There's all, this is also referred to as a cached data set. Now, the idea here is that we're going to copy the data from your data source and pull it into the Power BI model that's hosted inside of Power BI. So that could just be um, a Power BI desktop or later when you publish the Power BI desktop file to the Power BI service, as mentioned earlier. Now that imported cached data model will then live inside of the Power BI service itself. So let's try that out by importing some data. So as I said, we'll select get, get data at the top and right away we've got our choice of common data sources. Now we're going to choose Excel. If you wanted to choose a different data source that's not in this immediate list, you could click on more or other, and you'll get a full list of um, data sources that are available, you know, out of the, uh, the standard. Now, when you do import data, you have the option of all the, all the data sources that are available inside of Power BI. So, um, as I said, I'm going to select Excel, and then I'm going to browse to the file that I want to use. So I've got one here um, already pre-done, so Olympic athletes. Now, um, what, what um, Power BI does now, it opens up the navigator dialog. Now, this dialog allows me to select the sheets that are inside of the Excel workbook. Um, you'll also see a similar experience with other data sources. So, excuse me, you choose the tables and items that you want, and then you select which ones you're going to keep. And once that's done, you'll get a preview of that data. So I know I'm going to bring in athletes and I'm going to bring in countries as well. Um, now you have two options. You can either load the data and it'll pull that data straight into the Power BI data model, or I can select transform data. Now I always recommend transform data because selecting transform pulls up the Power Query Editor. This is the query that's actually going to be run against the data itself, where you can shape the data into what you want it to be. Some examples of things that you can do here, you can remove some columns, you can split some columns, you know, there's a whole range of items that are available to you inside of the Power Query dialog. I'm not gonna get into every single item in this session, but just know that typically you're going to want to transform your data first and not just blindly load it into your data model. So <clears throat> now we're here and we're going to create our first um, dashboard. So as I said, um, the first thing is you get that, we'll get that data into Power BI. And I said there are a couple of ways that we can do this. Once we've got that data in, um, we'll hit that transform button. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to transform that data. So what this brings up is the Power Query Editor. From here, you will see the different pieces of data that reside in the data set that you have selected to bring in. So I'm brought in, I have brought in the Excel file. Now, straight away, I can see from my data that this top row here, um, these are actually the column names. It's not the first row of data, the column names. So what I'm going to do to make sure that when this data gets pulled from Excel again, because each time you refresh the data, Power BI will go back to the original data source. So wherever you've pulled your Excel or your SQL or your project data from, it will go back to the original one and get the latest version of that. Um, once it's loaded that data in, um, it will then perform the queries that you do now within the transform area. So the first thing it will do, because I'm going to make it do this, the first thing is to um, go up to the top ribbon and I'm going to promote the first row from this table into um, the columns, just a left click. And straight away, they've all become the uh, column headers in here. And you can see over the right hand side here, these are the extra applied steps that build up um, the data that we have. Um, another one um, from here, I'm gonna need, I know I need to go into the athletes and add this extra information. If I go to um, the right, you can see it's a list of um, Olympic athletes. Here's their, their names, their gender, their age, when they competed. 
heights and some other um, areas so you can see the country they're um, from but also the year of the games and the type of games that they've had here so we know these are 1992 summer games what i want to do i want a column that brings these two together so all i want to do is just merge these now the easiest way to do this in here um, is right click and when you right click you get a load of extra information so this right click menu allows you to um, view um, a couple of the extra transformation areas that you have so if i drop down here i've got even more um, uh, menus and items that i can i, I can uh, go into and delve into here for this one i want to add column from examples so if you know what the you want your column to be um, be like um, what do you want it to be formatted in such a way you can give power bi an example of that and then it will know exactly what to do with the rest of the columns so if i left click on here you can see here that it just says enter sample values to create a new column so i'm going to be using the year but i also want to use the season column here over on the right this is where you'll enter your information so two clicks in there with, my, with the left mouse button um, I will <clears throat> uh, add in here the uh, the date. So I'm going to put the year in. So I'm going to put 1992 in there. And then I'm going to put in summer. Now, Power BI will look at these fields and say, right, well, you've got 1992 from this column and then you've got summer from here. So that must mean for the rest of this, you're going to want to grab the year and the, and the summer. So if I do that, you can year and the season sorry if i do that you can see that it's already pre-populated it's all grayed in there just so you can check that it's okay the text or the the dax code for making this column um has popped up here so you can actually see what it's doing um, with that information and if you're happy with it just click okay now you have a new column i can change the name of this column um, to something more meaningful than merged so what i'm going to do I'm going to give this to give this to uh, the Olympic Games. And so that now when you're happy with the transformation um, and you're happy with what you've done, what you need to do is close the Power Query editor. And um, what this is going to do, we're going to go up here to the left left mouse left most part of the screen and click close and apply. Now this will load all of the data into the Power BI data model itself. So from, from now on, as I've hit close and apply, um, <clears throat> every time you refresh the data, it's going to rerun those steps inside a Power Query to load that data back into your data model. Once that data is loaded, you're going to see it over on the far right in the field list. So as you can see, we're just waiting for it to load in. Um, I realized when I put this, uh, this data together that um, I had uh, a list of Olympic athletes since the games began, which is quite a lot, um, especially in Excel file. But there we go. So the field list is on the right. So inside of these tables, now we can see the fields that are in there. And if we want, we can just drag them to our canvas to start creating visuals. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, that is getting, that's how you get data from, or import data into your data model from um, an Excel file. Um, there are other ways to pull data in. So another way would be to use direct query. Now direct query, as the name suggests, um, will connect to your data source and issues queries against that data source as we interact with visuals or as we build our report. So by using direct query mode, your schema or the definition of your model will reside inside of Power BI. So that's Power BI desktop or the Power BI service. So it's only when you're actually interacting with your visuals uh, will the data actually um, be called or updated from your data source. So if that's in SQL Server, it's going to stay in SQL Server, whether that's on-prem or in Azure. And Power BI will query that data directly, load it into Power BI for the report to render the visuals, um, but then it doesn't cache that data. The data's gone at that point. Um, Power BI won't keep the data, so it stays where the data is already, you know, where it's already at, and that's at source. With import, we had access to all of the data, um, <clears throat> and that meant that Power BI has to uh, um, keep that file and that data when it gets published to the data service. 
So when you <clears throat> when you use direct query, you don't get the full featured um, functions of Power Query because um, what you're trying to do, they are limited and they are centered around relational data sources. Um, so uh, things like getting things um, on demand or pulling those queries from a large data set will have an effect on performance. So performance could end up being a big issue for you, especially if you've got a very large data set or the definition of your data is very large as well. So meaning you have a lot of columns so it's not only um, deep, but it's wide in terms of the data size. Um, so in terms of our report, um, there are the, the other way, and the other way that we can actually connect data would be using a live query. Now live queries, um, again, as they would suggest, um, would allow you to pull the data into your data model and then render those visuals on a live basis. So as every time you make a change to a visual, every time you refresh a visual within a report or you know change a filter, Power BI will go off to your data and run um, live uh, queries against it. Now, at the moment, um, using a live query is specific to um, SQL analysis services. Um, and that has to be on-prem, or it could actually be SQL analysis services in your, in your Azure cloud. So um, whenever we connect to an actual Power BI data set that's going to use live connections as well, um, it will have to be, as I say, uh, in satin analysis services. So your server, you will need your server information um, when you connect to it, and your database information is actually optional. Now, to select a live query um, or an analysis services query, you would make the change um, or you would go up, you would be up, sorry, make the connection in your home um, uh, ribbon, um, again, with the get data option. Now, as I've said, there are multiple um, uh, data sources, but for a live query, you know, we would choose something like analysis services because it's specific to there. And here you would have your server information would go here and your database but once these have been put in the radio button for connect live will um, uh, become live at the moment it's disabled because i've already got a import query in here of data but if you were starting this from scratch and you wanted to connect to your live tabular or multi-dimensional database then this is where you would go to pull that data in now when you pull the information in, um, when you get the preview from the navigator bar, you won't get the transform button, um, purely because all of the um, editing experience and all of the model definition is within the data source itself. So it doesn't reside in Power BI, it all stays within analysis services in this case. So this is something, <clears throat> excuse me, this is something that's more for your centralized model that maybe your IT department has set up for you. Um, and they would control the model. They would control the data and the refresh of that data. And all you're doing is just connecting live to it to create reports on top of that data. And something else that you'll notice <clears throat> once you have connected and uh, the data source is that everything on the, once you've connected to that data source, and you've hit okay uh, everything on the left hand side that you're going to see the icon for report designer you won't see the tab or relationship tab because they're not available to you um, because that data is held in um, live so in terms of creating our first report and how we would do it we've already got data in our data source and it's something that uh, you know we show and i can take you through power bi and the different elements what we have here, the main section, the main white window in the middle, this is called our canvas. And this is where all of our um, reporting and visuals um, come together. And this is where we you know, actually start making our report. This top bar here um, is called the ribbon. And we have a number of different menus that are available to us. So we have our home area where you would get our data on our queries and insert other elements into our canvas. We do have a specific insert if you want to insert um, specific apps um, or other shapes that go into our reports. The modeling tab within the ribbon 
um, this allows us to um, set the different definitions or different areas um, of the fields and different types for where they go and so forth. So if I um, show you the left hand side now, then when you, um, as you would have seen with our data uh, that we loaded in, um, I've got one table which is athletes and another table which is countries. Now there is a commonality between them or a common field between them and that is this NOC um, item. So NOC in terms of in terms of this data set is actually the, the National Olympic Committee. So for Great Britain the national the NOC will actually be GBR because that's Great Britain and Northern Ireland that's our that's what we would see on the medal table um, so that's it. Now in our countries you will also see the uh, NOC. Now what Power BI will do it will look at both of those fields and go oh I found two fields they're the same name let's um, see if they've got a commonality between them if they have then I will join them up in the data model. Now on the left here you will see three icons this top one here is the report view um, which shows you the main pane and the report here is our data view now this will show you the data held within these areas so as i see here's our noc fra is a um, easy one for us to remember it's france and then um, this one here um, is the relationship so this will show you all of the different data sets that you have added in and it will also show you any connections so as you, i haven't made um, these connections Power BI has done this itself. So as you can see, it's got a one to many relationship with the NOC. Now, if that wasn't what I wanted, if that wasn't um, correct, I could right click on this and I could go to properties and it will actually show me what it's thought are the correct um, settings for this relationship. Now, I, if I wanted to, I could change it to France and here. Um, I know that won't work. It will actually make my model fall over, so I can leave it as is, um, and it will, you know, it will, it will keep that connection ready for when I want to start creating my um, report. So, as I mentioned at the very beginning, um, the Microsoft tagline for Power BI was five minutes to wow. So. In this video, um, we're going to do just that. The first thing that you're going to need, though, is Power BI Desktop. So we've already got Power BI Desktop um, set up. So as I showed earlier, you go to the Microsoft Store, um, uh, and um, you can download, from, download it from there. But um, for many organizations, you may not be on Windows 10, or your organizations may be blocking the Microsoft Store. So the other way you can get it is by going back to Microsoft.com and go into products this is where we are at the moment we're in the product section with power bi and then you'll find the power bi desktop it'll take you to this download option now you've got the free button that you can click but then there are advanced options here which will allow you to actually download the executable um, for you to download so you would pick 64-bit or 32-bit and then you can install that on your machine <clears throat> just excuse me just like that um, outside of that I would check with your organization also because they may have a package that you could install through whatever process they have, whether that's something um, like SCC SCCM um, in terms of the software center and they may they may push out um, apps to your laptops automatically, especially as we're in our current situation where I would say the majority of us are working at home. Hence, this isn't the architect office. This is the study as such. Um, and um, remote assistance with laptops is pretty much um, standard across most organizations. So remember, once you launch Power BI Desktop, it will bring you, <coughs> excuse me, it will bring you to the welcome screen and you'll see the options, you know, to get started um, or get data and you'll see any files that you've opened before. Um, you're going to see this nice get data option and that will allow you to bring your data in. The other option um, you can do, obviously you just close that and then you can go up to the ribbon and click on your get data here you've got the common data sources listed across the top you have even got the recent sources so if i click that it will show the different recent sources that i've um, uh, worked on <clears throat> excuse me so in order for us to get to our first report um, and what we're going to do i'm going to i've already loaded the data as part of this and as you can see over on the right hand side we have um the fields I'm, I'm looking at actually looking at a different um power bi window 
I'll go back to this one. So <clears throat> on the right hand side here, as you can see our tables and our data set. This is our data model right here and our fields in here. So just for um, time, that's obviously the, the five minutes to wow a search. I'll take you through make, adding your first visual to Power BI and how, you, how that would be done. So in terms of things that you need to do <clears throat> or you want to do, what I'm going to report on in this specifically will be the number of um, uh, medals or number of uh, you know medals by country or by athlete um, that they won over the the expanse of the Olympic Games from day dot. So in order to start that, we're going to need to bring in some athletes. So what I can do here, I can left click on the name and I can select it with the little tick if I want, and that will start bringing that data in. I haven't had to do anything. The other way I can get this on here would be to quite simply um, drag it to the canvas. It's the same result as you can see. Um, whichever way works for you. If you put a visual on your canvas and you no longer want it, you have these three dots here, which bring up the more options uh, window. Left click on that and hit remove. So this is the visual I'm going to work on. Um, here we have a list of athletes. Now I'm going to uh, bring in their ages. Again, I can just left click their ages in there straight away. Um, the NOC, it's our, their Olympic committee. Um, I can actually bring in the, the country name uh, if I get that right. Let's have a look. If I know, I'll bring in the event. And I'll bring in the country name in a minute, and I'll show you how that's done. Um, bring in the event. Now, all of this is simple. Um, this is all coming from the one table. So this is, you know, if you've got one table in um, in um, <clears throat> in your query, then you're not really going to, you know, worry about all of this. Um, this will um, allow you to uh, connect to the multiple data sets. So obviously we brought in two different tables and we have the countries are actually separated out. Now they are linked by the NOC. So if I bring this in, if I just hit in left click, where it's got a matching NOC, you will see that it's um, picked up um, the correct country. Now I know for some of them, um, uh, I haven't cleansed my data, which is, you know, the first thing I said, transform that data, get it right. Some of them are blank because I may not have that information in my country's table. The um, source of data for my athletes came from one location and the country's area came from another. Um, so that is why that's uh, coming up. Now we can do certain elements like bring in the event. Then I brought the event in, so bring in the medal. So if they won a medal, if I go here, it will actually list out the medal if I drag that out a bit more. So you can see now where people have won medals and where you know they haven't. Now that's great. Everyone likes a table. You know, if your if your company are used to um, uh, Excel, then they will <clears throat> they will actually uh, be you know they actually show you this in terms of the tables and you'll actually be said presenting this like financial information is done in a lot of tables now it's not really something that we would go to power bi for if you're going to be presenting reports um, that are just tables then yes that can be done in excel but what we like is a bit of interactivity so first thing i'm going to do with this is go to my visualizations pane now uh, this pane will be able to you we have to select different charts and different areas what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a filter for this one, which is this one here. Um, they're called slices within Power BI because it allows you to slice and dice your data. And all I'm going to do on here, I'm going to pick my Olympic Games uh, field that I had um, at the very start. As you can see, all my Olympic Game field are in here. Um, I'm going to change this to a drop down, and I'm going to drag that up to the top and put that there. Now, what this will do, this will allow me to pick information uh, and it will update the uh, table underneath. So ev everything that I've picked in here, everything I filtered on here will actually have an effect on the visuals uh, within that canvas. Now, this is all well and good. Um, it's not really showing me much, but as you can see, it's very easy to pull the data into um, the environment and do something with it. Now, there are other ways of getting new visuals in. So I'm, if you click on these here in the visualization panel, you will see the three dots. Now, with, with a Microsoft tool, 
the rule of thumb is if you see the three dots, it means there's more options or there are more menu items. So this clicking here will allow me to get more visuals. Clicking left on there will take me to the App Store. Now, one of the visuals that um, you may have seen and we've all played with um, is actually the um, aquarium. Now, it's actually called the Enlighten. So I'm going to pull that in. If I search for it by the first couple of letters, <clears throat> you can see it's the Enlighten Aquarium. I'll add that, and what you see, the new visual will appear here. Now, all well and good, but what do we do with that, I hear you ask? Well, you wait and see. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at the um, big fishes and the small fishes in terms of medal wins um, in the Olympic Games history. Now, the easy way to do this, I'm actually going to remove this table here. I'm going to select, I'm actually going to remove this drop down as well. I'm going to take it out of the equation altogether. And I'm going to drag this to the main window if I can. In fact, I will double click. There we are. Double clicking also has the same effect as dragging. I'm going to fill the window with this. And now we want to see who the big fishes are. Who's won the most medals in Olympic Games history? Now, if you are you know, a regular watcher of question of sport or something like that, you may well know the answer. Um, so I'm going to put in the name as the fish. Immediately, our aquarium appears. And the fish size is going to be based on the medal count. Now, if I go back to my data, you will see that every time there's a medal, if I find one here, it'll be quick if I scroll through. Let's just do, let's take out the NAs. When you've got a medal, you'll get a one in this medal count. So it's very easy to add up the number of medals by just summing the medal count column. I'll go back by clicking my report icon on the left. Um, what I'm going to do, medal count, it's got the little summary icon next to it, so you know that Power BI is actually already going to summarize this for you. I will drop that in there. Straight away, we have um, a visual. Now, it's not very corporate friendly, obviously. Um, it's not something that you want to print out and take to a board meeting. But in terms of what you can see, you can see um, how Power BI is interpreting what you've got in your data. You can see the small fish. So we've got someone here, still got eight medals, and Jason Edward Lezak. Um, <clears throat> I have no idea which country he's from, but that's something else that you can add in into tooltips, or you can change, add a filter to filter out those countries. It's very obvious who the big fish is, um, and uh, it's very obvious that this person here, whoever this may be, is the one who's had the most medals. So I'll click on there, and you can see that this person is actually Michael Phelps. So Michael Phelps, um, the American swimmer, has won 28 Olympic medals. Not all gold, obviously. If I wanted to do it um, just by gold medals, what I would do, I would open up my filter, go across the medal, drop that into my filter count here, and then click on gold. And what this will do, once I've clicked on gold, it will filter that data. So you would have seen difference in the amount of fish so these are the only these are the gold medal winners now but you can still see there is a big fish in there this big fish is still michael phelps 23 gold medals in all um at different olympic games now that's in itself that's amazing but in terms of power bi and how quick it is to get to this information yes it is fish yes we're in aquarium but you can quickly see the information that you want to see um, it jumps out at you. Yes, as I said, it's it's a fish tank, but um, in terms of getting to your first report and understanding how Power BI works, then this is the prime example of what Power BI can do. So in terms of the reporting and in terms of where we are today um, on our element, I'm going to you know uh, leave the reporting element there for now and have a look and uh, kind of investigate your questions and what you may have. So I know a couple have come through in the um, in the chat window. So I'm going to start at the top. Uh, I'll take this down here because it'll be easier for me to concentrate without the fish swimming around on my screen. Um, let's go back to here and stop that. Brilliant. So um, I've got a question here. So what if I uh, only have access to Power BI online at the present time and not able to download desktop? Is the training different? So the training isn't different. Within, with Power BI desktop online, 
um, you still have the ability to um, create reports in this way, um, connect the data, um, and if it is just online, your organization have it just online. Um, they're most likely, it is most likely because they are protective of their data. Um, now, the way that we would do, way that you guys would access that in terms of the reports and creating it, um, you would have um, organizational approved data sets that were, would be allowed um, for you to make data um, reports against. Now, within the online experience, um, I'm just going to check to see if I have uh, a Power BI window open that I can show you. And um, within that experience, you still have the get data button. Um, it's part of the um, uh, it's part and parcel of Power BI, not just on Power BI the service, but sorry, not just Power BI desktop, but also online. So when you first go into Power BI, let's see if I've got my welcome part. Yes. So I have um, looked at this. So I will quickly share this. I know that um, I'm being pressed for time. So on this left hand side here, right at the very bottom, um, you will see this arrow and it says get data. If I left click the arrow at the bottom left, here we have the get data icon, um, area. So um, I'm in my workspace, if you remember. So my workspace is where I connect to my personal information, my personal reports. And this is where I, I hold all of that. I do have access to other workspaces, but for the purpose of this, I can show you this. So again, files you can connect to to get data. You can connect to databases. And if your organization um, keep their data in a set format for you to obtain, then this is where you would go to my organizational areas. But again, if you're hitting the get button, then you can pick local files, OneDrive, personal SharePoint, um, and then you can also grab from other, surface, uh, other services um, along here as well. Um, so uh, I'm just having a look here. <clears throat> Uh, oh yeah, so I see. Yeah, that's um, I see a mention there from someone who likes to um, play along when completing training, but not having Power BI desktop, I can't. Are you planning anything um, for online Power BI? Is there any training? So Power BI training is something that um, we do offer at Icatech. So we offer like a dashboard in a day training course where we take you through um, how to use Power BI and connect to Power BI, but then also using your own data within your organization to create your first report. <clears throat> Even the output from that first training day is, has the ability to wow your managers and your line managers and your directors. Um, primarily, it's because Power BI is even though it's been around for a while, it's still relatively new in lots of organizations. So being able to quickly disseminate information and bring things out to life um, is fantastic in terms of um, one, not only getting to the data you want quickly, accurately and efficiently, but also on a personal note for yourself, raising your own profile within your organization. Um, but certainly, if you want to talk about Power BI training, then I'm sure Rob, who will have a few words to say shortly, will be able to um, direct you into the right uh, place. Um, another question, Nikki, if we, if your Excel spreadsheet um, that you import or you use for your report, Visual has an update, e.g. more data is added, will this automatically update or do you need to manually do this by reloading the data? So if you, <clears throat> once you've published your report to the Power BI service, um, you can then schedule refreshes of that data. So it will look at where the data came from. Um, and if it's inside your reorganization, you will be able to refresh that data on a schedule. So let's just say it's a nightly schedule. So when you get back in into the office the following morning, the report you're looking at is updated with the latest information. So <clears throat> a lot of a lot of organizations use Excel to monitor a lot of um, a lot of items, a lot of things, whether it's just projects or other elements from within the organization. Um, having that automatically scheduled to refresh each night will mean that your report will be up to date when you need it, um, when it's most important to you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so if you wanted to change the visualization, could you just click on a different one or would you have to start again and input the fields again? Um, no, so changing a visualization, you can quite literally um, just click on a different one. So I've got the fish here. Um, I'm going to change to a column chart. There you go. So again, right at the top, Michael Phil Phelps, you can see straight away. And if you have clicked on it, 23 gold medals. 
here we have someone who may be more familiar to a lot of you, um, Usain Bolt. Um, he's down here with eight medals. Now, um, changing visuals, um, there's no there's no point with doing a donut chart because it's just going to be you know too many too many athletes to uh, look at. But changing visuals is just a case of just left clicking on a different visual and it will update uh, and give you that uh, you know updated view. Um, in terms of uh, other questions, no, I think that's it. Um, is there anything? Is there anything else that uh, you guys may want to uh, ask? You know, um, I'll I'll drop my screen now so I can see if any of you have actually raised your hand. If not, I will um, hand back over to um, Rob. Um, yeah. So within Power BI, um, now. I suppose Power BI is used for a lot of things, and Power BI is lends itself well to uh, time intelligence. So looking at the same time this time last year or this time last month is great for finances and things like that. So your to bring it back to your question specifically, what you'd be looking for would be the dates or the time um, in your data set listed in the same data set or same table. You can then create a new column, which is the time intelligence column. And what that will do will automatically look at that date against the a calendar table. Um, and then it will be able to calculate then that same point in time for whatever you use in your date range. Now, um, <clears throat> what you're talking about is actually something time intelligence reporting is something that we would be looking at in another session. Um, but you know, you're currently creating that report now. So in terms of that, it may not help you because you'll have to wait a bit of time to get that. But what I would suggest um, uh, for yourself is looking either at the Microsoft um, Power BI um, website and putting in there, um, putting a search in there for time intelligence or a better way. Um, I know I shouldn't be saying this, but a better way that's the um, Microsoft actually put um, their videos and training thing materials as well. Um, for certain elements <clears throat> onto YouTube, but there are, are also a lot of people on YouTube who um, will talk about this topic because it is a very hot topic within Power BI. Um, if you search for Power BI and time intelligence, you'll definitely get to what you need to um, uh, do to answer um, that question. But if you don't, um, uh, we'll give you all the contact details for how you can get in contact with us and we'll be sure to be able to help out with that as well. So if you're using Excel um, and you add extra columns into your Excel document at source, um, what will happen when you refresh that data, those extra columns will actually appear in your data set. Um, you don't have to worry about um, changing the elements. In fact, I can, you know, I know we are we are over time by three minutes, but I can <clears throat> certainly show that in um, practice as well. So if I Go back to our screen. We've got athletes and countries as I've already um, put in. What I will do, I will open up. Um, let's have a look. What's my eyes in there? Let's find my data source. That's one thing. This is the uh, live element. So if I go to webinars, data to use, Olympic athletes. As you can see, I've been umming and ahhing over which data to use. I was going to use shark attacks, but decided not. Uh, so Olympic athletes, open up that. And this is the core file um, that I've used and I've loaded in. As you can see here, it is literally just these tables. Now I can go here, I can insert a um, column to the left. I'm going to Matt, call it new apologies, column. That's mate. fine. Yeah, we are running over here. Yeah. No, 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 not that. No? Uh, I don't think your screen is sharing, bud. That's, oh, awesome. that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that, Rob. No worries. Sweet shit. Right, here we go. Sorry. So um, what I've done, I've gone in and I found the original source file. Um, I've, re, uh, I've added this column, called it new, and I'm just going to give it um, there's some arbitrary uh, fields in there. Nothing of any of any uh, worth, really. But you can see it's saved automatically because this is actually held within um, OneDrive. I can click save and it will save it again. But what I'll do, I'll close that with the X just closing it and uploading it. So if I go back to here now, um, <clears throat> you can see that 
obviously that field isn't in here. On the top in the ribbon, we've got our queries section here. So if I hit the refresh button, what this will do, that will go off, check the connections, um, and fingers crossed, uh, you know, if you have never worked with children and animals or whatever, um, it will it will appear in here in the in the in the right uh, hand side here. Um, I'm just having a look to see if there's any anything any other questions while we wait for this to refresh. <clears throat> let me have a look. Hang on, let me wait for that. There we go. So now we have a new column that's appeared there. That's the one I've just created, and all I had to do was create it at source and then hit refresh and off it goes and pulls it in. So if I was to look at my data, you would see the new column here. And if I filter it on what's in there, I don't want the blank ones. There's my two rows of the columns that I've just added of, uh, as I said, no great importance. Yes, yeah, so um, Power BI will handle that as well. Um, so in terms of what we have um, in Power BI uh, and the way that will be done and making sure I am sharing my screen this time. Um, so I'm going to go to the, uh, uh, I suppose I'll go to the get data part. So you can see, actually no, the transform area here. So when you are connecting to SQL um, server and you know, or a SQL database, and you know that you're going to need specific prompts to go back and relate um, that relay that information back to um, uh, SQL Server. What you would do, or what you would um, do at the outset, you would create a parameter. Now, yeah. um, if you work with databases, you'll know all about parameters. Yeah. So these are the ones. You now you could have a start date in here. Sure. Um, and you know you can tell it what you want it to be any value and current value okay that oh i haven't put anything in there so i'll put a current value of first of the first 19 oh, uh, 1990 there we go so that's our parameter here now we've on if i just close that within the reporting canvas as well you can then use um, your parameters as fields within a report so if you wanted to um, if you want, if you want a date range field, um, you could uh, you could actually point that date range field. You don't actually have the time slicer um, in here because it's a clean install, but you would actually point that to the parameter instead of the field, and then every time that changed, and then you you know you refresh that data, it would go off using those parameters um, uh, to your, uh, against your SQL database. Doesn't look like it. If if, if there are any more questions, then please. Uh, do raise if we raise your hand, but if not, um, I will hand back over to um, Rob uh, from Microtech just to uh, close us out. Thank you ever so much, Matt, and uh, thank you everyone who joined the session today. Um, it was really, really great to see the the level of engagement that we're getting. So it's uh, it's always nice to have the feedback and know that obviously we're we're kind of focusing our content in the right area. You know, as I'm sure you guys can appreciate, we're we're very, very busy, and Matt's time is very valuable to us. So it's it's great to have him. To do these sessions, and uh, I, th I think just based on the you know the appetite that's clearly out there for it, I'd certainly like to to run more of these types of sessions in the future. So I'd love to kind of put a question out to to those that are left on the call: is that you know if this is something that you want to be seeing more of, I'll uh, I'll follow up with everyone individually anyway, just with a quick email, just to kind of address some of the questions because I know there's some some people who have asked about uh, how we can get the dashboard in a day training and uh, some of the YouTube content and if we can share the data and things. So me and Matt will uh, ha have a quick chat offline and see if we can uh, get something put together. But rest assured, I'll, I'll follow up with all of you individually just to make sure that uh, everything gets addressed. But um, that being said, you know, if there are any questions, any any queries, any quick things that we can answer, you know, we're, we're happy to try and help deliver value wherever we can. Um, and yeah, other than that, thank you ever so much for joining us, guys. In enjoy the rest of your evening. Apologies for the overrun, but uh, hopefully you all found it useful. And uh, yeah, I'll be in touch with you all sh shortly. So Matthew, once again, thank you ever so much for the for the insight, mate. It was a great session. And we look forward to seeing you all in the next. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Have a good evening. Take care.